Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I'd like to address a question that came uh, to me recently where a customer wanted to know if it was possible to automatically generate assembly browser folders and then put the components inside of them. So here we have a sample assembly, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, what they're talking about is creating a folder here. So we'd say create a new assembly folder, call it extrusions, and then I would literally drag and drop this component into the extrusion folder. That way we know all the extrusions can go into one folder, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the general idea, and uh, I'll just move it back. Generally speaking into that area, it doesn't have to be in that order, but just so you can see, I've got three extrusions, two hardwares, and a purchase. So what the assembly folders do is they would take all those components and you would be able to place them into a folder. It kind of cleans up the assembly browser a little bit. So there's no out of the box tool that does this, but it is possible with iLogic. So what I've decided to do in order to utilize the ability to template our design files to make this technique accessible to people and to utilize the content center, I've decided to use iProperties. So if we take a look at one of these files, come over to extrusion test, and if I look at the uh, iProperties here, I'll right click on it, iProperties, you can see that I've created a custom iProperty. It's really important you name these the same. I'm calling it assembly folder, and I'm giving it the value of extrusions. So that's what we're going to use in the iLogic code to actually generate a folder and organize the file into that folder. So the advantage of using a custom my property is if I wanted to, I could come up here, do a save as, and I could save it as a template. That way every new part that I generate or assembly file, if it's a subassembly, would automatically have that custom I property in it. So I won't go through all of them, but each one of these, the hardware, the purchase parts and the extrusions all have that assembly browser or that assembly folder i, I property. So then the next step is that i logic and I've done a couple iterations on this. Uh, so huge thanks goes out to my colleague Curtis Wagspack who uh, if you've been working in Inventor and i logic for any amount of time you've come across his in the trenches blog you've seen him on the on the forums. He's just really, really good at iLogic. So I got stuck at a certain point and, and he was gracious and, and helped me out. So we'll take a look at this code and then we'll run it really quickly. So uh, I've also written a blog post on this. So if you're curious and you actually want a copy of the iLogic, that will be in the blog post. But pretty standardy stuff. We're defining the documents, etc., etc., component definitions. What's a little bit unique here is when we look at things like the browser pane. So there are actually different browsers. In fact, uh, we just switched from model to iLogic browser. So you have to make sure you're using the right browser. And every entry in the model browser is actually a node. So you have to get used to not just finding the component, but you have to find its node uh, location in the model browser. So. Once we've done all that defining, now we get into the nitty gritty. So we go through each component. We're searching for that assembly folder I property, and then we're creating a big array list. So we're just trying to list all of them that we find. Then we're gonna take this list and we're gonna check it against each existing browser folder. So for example, the very first extrusion component that we come across, that will eventually generate that folder and so if we come across another component that has the extrusions folder location we don't want to create additional folders we just want to use the existing one so this will check and see if the existing folders are there if they are it removes that from the list so we're only going to be adding new folders here so if it comes across any items that it hasn't created a folder for before it will generate a folder and then the last one is we're going to look at each folder in the browser check all of the components and see if they belong in that folder if they do we're going to take that node and we're going to add it into that folder 
Okay. Now, optionally, I've given a little message box here. This is, of course, you won't do this in production, but just so you get a warm fuzzy the first time you run it, etc. You could uh, put a message that's basically going to say, hey, I found this component. It belongs in this folder, so I've added it. Okay, so that's the code. Now, a quick word, I'm running this locally, but of course, if you have external rules, I could have and probably should have put that in the external rules location. So just so you know, this of course could be an, uh, a, <clears throat> an external rule. Also, I didn't add um, uh, subroutines, so you can have functions, subfunctions, subroutines inside of an iLogic rule. I kept it separate just in case people aren't familiar with that, but that's also a great technique if you're gonna call the same general operations more than once, you should create a subfunction. But enough jibber jabber, I'll go ahead and right click, run the rule, and you can see it's saying, hey, I found this extrusion, I'm adding it to the extrusions folder. So of course you wouldn't want to do this in the production world, but I'm just showing you it is cycling through each component and it's putting it in the appropriate folder. So if we switch back to the model, you see there are no more loose components, but if we expand each of these folders, there they are. So that's the tip. It's kind of a great question that was asked and I was happy to dig into it a little bit. Again, thank you, Curtis, for, for the assistance. I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please let us know and have a blessed day.